Yeah, and I am Brother R.A. The brother has a lot to say each and every day. <laughs> yeah, we're going to let the good times roll. Dropping knowledge up in here this evening. But, you, but first... Let me tell you, you can't get Black Talk Radio nowhere else but right, but right here on BSRLive.com and soon RealBlackTalk.com. That's right, Real Black Talk. Let's go ahead and jump in to our topic for this evening. We have quite the astounding show planned for you. You know how we harp on good health, especially for black people. Well, what is the element that makes black people black? Is it called melanin? Do we know what melanin is? Do we know how to take care of our melanated selves? Well, on the phone line from the Atlanta area. Decatur, Georgia. Decade Atlanta, all the same, you know. But we have an MD, a leader of knowledge. She's a, a obstetrician, a, gyne- a director of gynecology and obstet- obstetrics. Help me out here. Help a brother out. You know, I have obstetrics. Obstetrics. <laughs> You'll I, get it. I can't get it. She she catches babies. Okay, very good. How's that? How about if I just go ahead and welcome Dr. Jewel Pukram to the airwaves, the author of Vitamins and Minerals from A to Z. Dr. Jewel Pukram, welcome to Black Talk Radio. Oh, greetings, and thank you. I'm very happy to be a part of that. Thanks. But I do want to uh, just kind of bring you up to date. Mm-hmm. I was trained as a surgeon and a gynecologist. I uh, do obstetrics rarely um, and usually for special people. But primarily, my uh, forte now is tissue regeneration. And that's one of the main reasons why I got into melanin, because in my surgical practice, surgeons really don't like to operate on black people per se as far as skin goes, because our skin really is persona non grata. It's like, you know, untouchable because of the fear of a keloid. And a surgeon's reputation is always based on if the outside looks bad it doesn't matter how well you did on the inside they're not usually going to come back to you Mm. and so keloid formation has really been a surgeon's nightmare when it comes to operating on black people so therefore my forte was to be the best surgeon i could possibly be and so i had to recognize that we had a different skin uh texture obviously we have a different skin color than caucasians even though all my textbooks primarily pictured caucasians uh, the race of people that I chose to work with was also melanin dominant, which means that they had pigment, black skin, and we didn't have a lot of information ever in those textbooks about how to handle it. So I had to really learn that and learn how to deal with the scar not becoming jet black because many times, and people can testify to that, if they traumatize their body, the area becomes extremely darkened, and it may not ever lighten up if they happen to be uh, brown as opposed to a very black person that, you know, obviously they don't have those drastic changes in color, but the texture changes. So, therefore, this is what brought me into the realization of recognizing that I had something different. I'm, I'm curious, Dr. Pukram, if you came to the conclusion after seeing that scarification going on with melanated skin, if indeed um, that might be some kind of signal that perhaps uh, melanated people should... Well, no. Well, um... The answer to that is yes and no. Okay? It's like I ideally do not like uh, people to have surgery, period, mm-hmm. okay, because the body is sacred. We can see that, and it shouldn't be entered un- into. How do we know that? Because we don't have any way of getting into it. There are no zippers. Right, exactly. So that means that everything has been put so well into place and has been given a permanent means of functioning, cleaning itself, nurturing itself, nourishing itself, that there's no need for you to worry about it and handle it. That's what's so awesome about the body. So therefore, that means that when a person's body has to be entered into, something has definitely gone awry that has interrupted the normal programming of those tissues. So once that has happened, whether the person used bad judgment and wound up being in an auto accident or a building fell on them because in their bad judgment they basically were in the right place at the wrong time, etc., 
now we have to work with bringing the body back to its natural position of being closed. And in the process of working with those kind of situations, we had to look at what does this melanin do. Now, many of my textbooks, they don't have much on it, but now over time, and especially because so many other black scientists have recognized for many reasons, from many different directions, that this pigment is awesome. All of the colors that we can see with the visual eye are related to melanin. It's very important to understand. So that chlorophyll is the first cousin to melanin. Yes, our life. Okay. What is basically, what is melanin? You, well, we, melanin is very interesting. Now, let's just look at this from a very basic, mm -hmm. okay, it is a pigment. It ranges in color from pale yellow to reddish brown to blue black. It is in, as far as the body goes, every major organ of the body, and it has many, many different functions. Now, from a technical perspective, what melanin is, it is biological living light. Living light. That's correct. Okay, so that means then that we have now a light source interacting and reacting upon itself. How did you come to the conclusion that that was living light, biological living light? Well, when light? you look at the properties of what it does, it is black melanin melanin that is blue black actually contains and is able to energize itself and to hold on to the entire frequency of the electromagnetic spectrum the electromagnetic spectrum is nothing more than light it consists however of the visual spectrum which makes the rainbow of colors it consists of cosmic waves radio waves laser short wave radio long wave radio tv ultrasound, all of these are part of the light spectrum. Melanin, pure black melanin, interacts with all of that by absorbing it and holding it into itself. So if melanin is put on the surface of something, all of those frequencies of light can be absorbed and guess what? The heat is dissipated without destroying whatever lays underneath it. NASA, for example, uses a synthetic form of melanin to coat the entire undersurface of all of the space shuttles. All of the wiring to in these uh, highly technological vehicles are covered with melanin so that the heat that is generated from these objects being hurled into space into the atmosphere through the ionosphere can tolerate the heat and come out on the other side into outer space without exploding. So black why, spaceships... Why? Because the melanin absorbs the heat and dissipates it instead of actually allowing it to become a a um, friction interaction where eventually combustion takes place. It prevents combustion. That is why we are able to be at the center of the earth, at the equator, in pure intense sun, the temperature 110 degrees, and our skin will not blister, and our skin will basically not burn because of melanin. So melanin, you would say, is like the depth of the universe. Exactly. It is the universe in a microcosm when it is in your body, and it is a macrocosm when you look into outer space and when you look into a black hole. Exactly. Is you are looking at biological living light. You said there's, li okay, living light. Mm -hmm. Now, is there such a thing as dead light? Well, there's such a thing as as matter being inert, that is being a void of what appears to be interacting actively that at least we can measure with light. For example, a piece of plastic. A piece of plastic can actually have a, uh, be created at a frequency where it can exhibit the color red, but does it have a metabolic exchange rate, not one that you can detect? Does it eliminate not anything that you can detect? Does it actually absorb energy as though it is consuming it like a food source or an energy source? Not anything that you can detect. And so we call something like that inert because it does not appear to carry on an active metabolic process where it appears to have a identifiable interaction with the environment. It just lays there. I, I just want to make a connection, if you can, doctor, between melanin and the pineal gland. If melanin is the depths of the universe, 
personified in black people. What is the relationship between